Hello everyone, I'm the Enforcer, and welcome to the Breaking News. Today's breaking news is that a terrorist attack is currently underway inside of Moscow at the Crocus City Hall music venue inside of the northwestern area of the city of Moscow. According to initial information that we've been able to hear, there have been gunfire, or the sounds of gunfire, reported from inside the building from these two clips here. Here are the videos. <laughs> We can hear the sounds of rifle fire emanating from inside the building as people go running for shelter and exiting the building through the front stage and through any exit that they can find. It is understood that at the moment it is two gunmen, both dressed in camouflage with uh, head covers and also firing automatic AKs, either an AKM or an AK-74. That information is not known at the moment. We hear gunfire uh, sporadically being shot as they are continuing to move their way through the concert hall and towards the area of this room that this video is being filmed at. On to our next clip this is from the actual lobby of crocus city hall the build the room more so right outside of the actual concert venue where we can continue to hear the sounds of gunfire this time much more loud and unmuffled as this video was taken in the room where the gunmen were once again as you may be able to hear it is the sound of automatic gunfire Automatic firearms are usually hard to access for anyone outside of military personnel, possibly suggesting that this has some kind of Russian armed or Russian security forces involvement. You hear the gunfire continuing. We now see the cameraman getting up and attempting to flee the area. After this attack then occurred, we started to hear that a fire has now been started inside of Crocus City Hall by the armed gunmen, and we just got the news that it's not just two armed gunmen, it's actually three armed gunmen who are currently inside of the building at the moment, and now a massive fire has begun to erupt and consume the roof of Crocus City Hall, as seen in this video from nearly a mile away. We well, can see the fire consuming the roof as it continues to spread without really any involvement by any Russian fire brigade in the area or even a response by the Russian armed police, the OMON or the FSB, which usually would have responded to an attack like this within 20 to 30 minutes based off of prior instances that have occurred inside of the city of Moscow. This is all going to be building to a very interesting revelation here in a second, but we can see the fire continuing on Crocus City Hall as seen from not that far away. But you see people down here on the sidewalk not knowing that a massive attack, a terrorist attack from what we understand, just occurred on Crocus City Hall and now a massive fire is beginning to engulf the entire concert venue. Based on the information we've been able to find at the moment, considering that this is happening as we are making this news summary right now, some things are starting to not add up that are seeming somewhat odd. First... The armed gunmen appear to have been, I mean, we are not going to be showing these clips due to uh, them being a little bit too sensitive for YouTube, but we have been able to find video of the armed gunmen entering the building. And from what we were able to find, these armed gunmen are wearing camouflaged uniforms very similar to the Ratnik pattern that would be seen in the Russian armed forces and are wearing ski masks that are apparently green and black in color. Not only that, but these armed gunmen are equipped with automatic AKs, something that usually one would not be able to access unless if you were a part of the Russian government in some kind of a security force like the FSB or the border guards or if you were a part of the Russian armed forces directly such as the Rosgardia or for example the regular Russian army. The attack is seeming to be a little bit odd from the outset especially considering that it sounds as though this attack was brought about in the middle of one of the largest missile attacks that has ever occurred on Ukraine just over the past few hours, and also one of the largest attacks that is being conducted on Russian soil by the Free Russian Army. This attack is lining up with a whole bunch of other instances that are going on at the moment, and we rarely ever throw this idea out there. But this does appear to have the 
the indicators of a false flag attack, one that is being propagated possibly by the Russian government to try and make it seem like there is a better justification for them to do something in the future. They may try and make this sound like the terrorist attack was conducted by the Free Russian Army that is currently fighting inside of Belgrade. They may also say that this was conducted by pro-Ukrainian partisans that are now conducting terrorist attacks on the Russian public, and this will be used, the false flag at, at least, will be used by the Russian government to possibly try and mobilize more soldiers into the Russian army to try and continue on the war which is starting to falter. We're not exactly sure what it is at the moment, but there are some very interesting signals that we are getting from this attack that may possibly suggest that it is a false flag attack, or it may be a legitimate attack. There is an ISIS cell that is still operating inside of the Russian Federation at the moment, as well as the Ingushetian Liberation Army, which has been known at occasional times inside of Ingushetia to conduct things that would look along the lines of a terrorist attack, but... At the moment, this is inside of Moscow, the northwestern side of Moscow, a city of around 11 million people. Nearly 10% of the population of Russia lives within the city. And the fact that an attack has happened here so brazenly, and on top of that, has caused such a high amount of casualties from what we've heard already, with 12 dead and 35 wounded as this video is being made, this is seeming to be a little odd. Let me know in the comments section below if you believe this to be a legitimate terrorist attack, possibly by a group like the uh, ISIS-P, I believe it is, that is currently inside of Russia, or if this is a, a false flag attack being conducted by the Russian government to justify further actions inside the Ukraine war or further actions on the international scale. Meanwhile, while the Russians have been trying to either conduct a false flag attack or have had one of the largest terrorist attacks happen inside of Moscow in the capital's history for about a couple of years, it is time for us to move on down into the area around Kiev as the Russians conducted their own terrorist attack on Ukraine not that long ago in the form of one of the largest air attacks that has been seen. It was the fourth largest air attack by the sheer volume of air targets and it was also the second largest attack of this year. The Ukrainians were able to successfully shoot down some of these incoming missiles, but out of all of the incoming missiles, they were only able to shoot down around 65-70% to 70 of all incoming Russian missiles, as well as all incoming Shaheds. In this attack in particular, no Kinzel hypersonic missiles were shot down. Out of around the 5-7 to seven that we heard were launched, None of those were shot down by Ukrainian air defense, which is somewhat concerning. But here's the clip of the presidential brigade near Kiev shooting down one of the incoming missiles. We can now see the missile on its way hitting the target yes. and destroying it. Yes. We're going to be muting that right there. The presidential brigade then went over a little bit of extra detail and information about what kind of system was used. Uh, we're not exactly sure if this was a man pad. We have, been heard, we have heard that supposedly it may be a L3 Harris system that shot down that missile. But nevertheless, great to see that the presidential brigade was able to shoot down one of the incoming missiles that was heading into Kiev. Sadly... This story did not repeat throughout all of Ukraine. As we were actually live last night covering the news of the war in Ukraine as this missile attack was occurring, and we were able to hear the unfortunate news that the Zaporizhia uh, hydroelectric power plant inside of the city of Zaporizhia was hit critically last night. The dam is in um, stable condition, and the structure, from what we understand, has not been compromised by the attack, but we have seen that serious damage has been caused to the dam, and not only that, um, casualties, civilian casualties, of course, have been endured during this attack. We got this news while we were live on air last night, and we could already see the pictures were coming out showing the damage to the hydroelectric dam's uh, power generating facilities, and we also saw that an attack hit the upper part of the dam where the uh, lift towers are, which lift the floodgates out of the way allow to allow the flow of water. This is one of the worst attacks that we've ever seen so far, and it's very similar to the Novikovka Dam attack that occurred around the same time last year. Moving us on into the area of uh, more evidence of the bridge being hit, we were actually able to see one of the uh, KH-101 caliber missiles flying in and hitting the bridge here in this clip. And right before hitting the bridge, it deployed a large amount of countermeasures, which would have made air defense requiring a lock-on of a heat signature uh, next to impossible. But here's the clip. But you see the missile coming in right there. Diving onto the bridge. And then hitting the dam. Yeah, 
Well, that, that's the end of that clip, but still showing the attack being conducted by the Russians with their caliber missile and hitting the dam seriously. Hopefully, this will not cause any serious problems for the dam. From what we understand, the tracks that the, uh, that the towers, or more so the cranes, follow along on the dam has been completely interrupted and severed around halfway through the dam, meaning that some of the locks will, may not be openable up until the near future, maybe even for quite some time. But moving on from that, the Free Russian Army is continuing their actions inside of the area of Belgorod as we got to see that there was a continued presence of Free Russian Army forces here today. This picture being taken inside of the Sviat Forest or the Sivat uh, Forest inside the Belgorod region and showing that the Free Russian Army is still there and still holding their ground. It appears that they're planning on making a prolonged conflict in this area and we're also able to see that they are continuing a barrage on the city of Belgorod. We got to see this from multiple different videos. We got to see this right here as a Russian citizen runs into his house and an MLRS barrage begins to blanket the area not long after he entered his building. When you see the citizen hide, and then off in the distance, when you see an MLRS explosion on the right side of the screen, another one in the center, and then one right on the street. Moving on to our next clip, we can then see another explosion on one of the streets of Belgrade caused by MLRS fire. We assume that Free Russian Army MLRSs must be near the area of Maslova Pristan, as the BM-21 Grad only has a 12-mile range. That is its most effective firing, well actually not most effective, that is its farthest firing distance, with its most effective firing distance being around approximately 8 miles. When you see here another video being filmed by a Russian citizen, as more MLRS rockets begin to land in the area. Russian citizens have been warned to evacuate by the Free Russian Army from the area of Belgorod as the war is going to be brought to the city, but we can see that apparently the Russian civil authorities have not passed this message along, and the Russian citizenry, if they even hear the message, are apparently not heeding it, once again putting them in the line of danger. Moving on from that, we can see a massive fire that also broke out from one of the MLRS rocket attacks. Overall, it does appear that the Free Russian Army has a very large intention of remaining within the area and tying up valuable Russian resources and efforts that could be sent to Ukraine instead inside of the Belgrade Oblast trying to hold them back from taking the city of Belgrade in the future. We also heard that the Russians are apparently attempting to build a 100,000 strong army uh, for some kind of a summer offensive, uh, but nevertheless, we're not hearing much more about that than the mere statement. We do not believe at the moment that the Russian Federation even has the ability to gather up 100,000 uh, soldiers unless they were conduct a partial mobilization. And this once again ties back into why I believe that the uh, City Hall attack inside of Moscow is a part of a false flag attempt to try and justify the partial mobilization of enough manpower to conduct this 100,000 man strong offensive sometime during the midsummer. That is what I'm largely believing at the moment, and not only that, We've been hearing some very interesting news from the United States today, some that may enrage uh, some people, some people may not care about it all too much, but I thought I'd share with y'all nevertheless because it's something that we just heard and apparently the Ukrainians have been able to corroborate is true information. The United States of America's government has requested that the Ukrainians stop all attacks on Russian oil refineries because this could start to seriously inflate the price of oil worldwide and this could affect the outcome of domestic elections inside of the United States of America. Of course, this channel completely veers away from taking a partisan side on politics, so I cannot make a comment whether I agree or disagree with the statement being made by the United States government. However, I have seen that many people have been outraged, and some people have justified it today, as to why the United States would want the Ukrainians to halt their oil refinery strikes. Striking Russian oil refineries is a strategic necessity at this point in the war for Ukraine, as it starts to deprive the Russians of the ability to produce their own fuel, and therefore decreasing the ability that the Russians have to conduct any kind of operations, whether they be directed at Ukraine inside of the Russian armed forces, or whether it just be normal economic activity, it is all greatly hindered by a severe lack of oil. The United States' request uh, for Ukraine to stop these attacks on strategic infrastructure is, of course, suiting an American um, domestic need, of more so trying to further uh, a certain kind of a goal in, in a domestic election here in the United States, but is completely hindering and completely crimping the Ukrainians' ability to stop the, the Russians from continuing to conduct terrorist attacks inside the nation of Ukraine. 
One could try and make an argument, either way you look at it, that it's justified or an unjustified statement by the United States government. I, of course, can not make any kind of a statement that one is more valid of an argument than the other, considering that it's sort of almost a domestic political matter, and we do not talk about those matters here on this stream. But let me know what you think about the idea of the United States telling Ukraine how to fight their war because of how elections may turn out in the United States as an end result. That is something that many people have been talking about today. And of course, once again, we, this is an um, a unpartisan channel. We do not pick a side on domestic politics, but I have seen many people are enraged just by the mere fact that the U.S. government would want Ukraine to fight the war a different way or to hinder themselves or to even hurt themselves in the war so that way domestic political ambitions could be achieved inside the United States. Let me know in the comments what you think about that as well on top of the false flag attack that may have happened on Moscow today. But with that, that is all of the breaking news that we have at this moment. I thank you all so much once again for watching this channel. If you all have enjoyed, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to support these kinds of video projects and help them to keep going, you can also support us on Patreon as well. Link in the description below. Um, I got to give a huge shout out to all of our patrons who currently are helping this channel to keep running and are continuously helping us to make these kinds of video projects possible with their support. We thank you all greatly for that. And of course, I will see you all in the next one.